Welcome to this episode of Mentors at Your Benchside, a podcast giving you advice, tips and tools for getting the most out of your research. I'm Laura Grassi and today I'll be talking to you about how FRET works and using FRET to visualise protein interactions. If you think FRET stands for Fluorescence Resonance Energy Transfer, you are wrong. In good company, but wrong. FRET actually stands for Firster Resonance Energy Transfer. Find out why and more about how FRET works in this episode of Mentors at Your Benchside. Let's start with a short history of FRET. In 2011, it was the centenary of the birth of eminent German physical chemist Theodor Furster. Furster was a very significant figure in his field. His work provided important insights into the nature of excited state photochemical reactions and the understanding of organic dyes. His most famous contribution was his work on the electrostatically mediated energy transfer between sensitizer and acceptor molecules. And while it is quite possible that you have never heard Furster's name before, I bet you have heard of the technique that bears his name, Furster Resonance Energy Transfer, or FRET. FRET is key to a wide range of natural phenomena, including photosynthesis. However, its application in microscopy and its ability to uncover molecular processes in biological systems at the microscopical level is what this episode will focus on. So why use FRET? Investigating the interactions between different proteins in a cell is critical for understanding protein function. Certainly, biochemical applications such as immunoprecipitation and pull-down assays are indispensable for identifying protein-protein interactions. However, these techniques do not provide spatial resolution or even temporal information in the context of a living cell. On the other hand, in living cells, immunofluorescence can provide spatial resolution and fluorescent tags such as GFP can provide spatial and temporal information in living cells. But these approaches tell us little about protein-protein interactions. The challenges with visualising protein-protein interactions. It is only logical that to have interaction, there must be co-localisation. You could detect co-localisation by employing fluorescent antibodies or fluorescent proteins, such as one green protein and a second red protein, and scanning the sample with a confocal microscope or using deconvolution, or both, to identify co-localisation or yellow. But a yellow signal may or may not equal co-localisation, depending on your definition of co-localisation and specifically what scale you are interested in. If, for example, you want to know if a certain non-pyrimidal neuron expresses both GABA and parvalbumin, you can stain for both, GABA in red and parvalbumin in green. If the neuron looks yellow, then you can say that these proteins are both in that neuron. But things are not so definitive the closer you look. When using a diffraction-limited microscope, we must know that we cannot decipher distances that are, at best, less than 200 nanometers. This means that with these microscopes, any two signals that originate from points closer to each other than 200 nanometers are considered co-localized. Not because they are, but because of the technological limitations. Second, we must remember that if we are looking for an interaction, this kind of co-localization, vicinity to be more realistic, is not enough. It would be better to know that the two proteins are actually close enough to interact. Enter FRET. Before we dive into the details of how FRET works, you need to have an understanding of how fluorescence works. Fluorescent molecules absorb light within a specific range, their excitation spectrum causing them to be excited. The excited phase lasts a short time because the excited molecule wants to return to the low energy state, which is achieved by releasing energy, first through vibrations and then through admitting light. See the episode description for a link to the article on how fluorescent molecules work for more details. How FRET works. The use of FRET in optical microscopy makes it possible to detect two molecules approaching within the range of a few nanometers. To perform FRET, you need two fluorescent molecules, a donor and an acceptor. When these molecules are close and the donor fluorophore is excited, part of its energy is transferred to the acceptor fluorophore. This transfer causes the acceptor fluorophore to fluoresce, even though it has not been directly excited by light. 
the transfer of energy between the donor and the acceptor happens in a non-radiative fashion through long-range dipole-dipole interactions. In short, the excited fluorophore acts as an oscillating dipole that can undergo an energy exchange with a second dipole having a similar resonance frequency. This can all sound quite complicated, but this is the reason why calling FRET fluorescence resonance energy transfer is not entirely correct, as it implies that it is through fluorescence that the energy is transferred, which is not the case. Understanding FRET efficiency. The range over which this energy transfer can occur is limited to about 10 nanometers, and as the efficiency of transfer is highly sensitive to the distance between fluorophores, FRET measurements prove very useful for assessing close molecular interactions. The energy transfer efficiency also depends on the spectra overlap of the two fluorophores. That is, the overlap between the donor fluorophore's emission spectrum and the acceptor fluorophore's excitation spectrum. Therefore, you need to take care when choosing your fluorophore pairs for your FRET experiment. For example, CFP and YFP are a very popular FRET pair. And you can easily understand why when you look at their excitation and emission spectra. Hint, they overlap very well. Measuring FRET. Now, we cannot directly measure the energy transfer from donor to acceptor. Instead, indirect measurements are used to infer FRET. These include measuring the amount of acceptor excitation, the level of donor quenching, and the rate of fluorescence decay. See the episode description for a link to the article on how to measure FRET to get details on the different methods for measuring FRET and get practical tips for choosing FRET pairs. We hope we've helped you understand how FRET works and why it doesn't stand for fluorescence resonance energy transfer. Check out the episode description for links to related articles and resources. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast to get more help and advice from mentors at your bench side.